on this episode of A Tale of Two Hygienists. Generally, I've been a fairly healthy person. When I say that, not every day of my life, and it's been literally a journey, a a very long journey, the ebbs and flows where some years I'm really, really good and I'm on point with my health journey. And then, you know, life happens, things happen, stressors happen, relationships happen, moves happen, all the things, and I fall off. So with my food prepping, you know, it's really easy. I mean, especially we're hygienists, we're busy. The grab and go situation is amazing. It's easy, it fits into our life, it fits into our schedule. We can shove food between patients, you know, all those things. But on the weekend, you know, that's the hard part. You have to plan. I mean, Sunday, I spend Sunday planning my week, planning what I'm gonna eat for the week, planning my workouts. So just being really intentional about it. But before that, being intentional about a specific goal, because that's really what changed for me. Yeah, this is a tale, a tale, oh yeah, a tale of two hygienists. So there might be only one, bringing the best of dental knowledge, and we do it all with ease. We cover oral health and screening, and preventing gum disease. We're gonna do a lot of learning, and have a little bit of fun working at the dentist. A tale of two hygienists. Listeners, welcome back to another episode of A Tale of Two Hygienists, episode number 449. My name is Andrew. And I'm Annie. Annie, we have a good one. Um, I'm really excited. The, our lineup, folks, is like killer for like the next, I don't know. Well, we're in we're into September with some of the yeah. stuff that we have recorded so far. So um, everyone, we're, we're in for something good. Today's episode was recorded at RDH under one roof. And uh, Annie, I, you and I talked about this a little bit before the show, but Jamie Britt is the guest. Jamie and I met, you know, quite a while ago at, at Voice of Dentistry. And she's been on this journey, this health and fitness journey. It's been, you know, pretty unique and interesting because I feel like she's uh, had to kind of rediscover what health is, I guess, in, in a way. And so this episode really would kind of like would do our very best kind of chronicle where she was coming from. Cause I think a lot of us think that, you know, okay, well, we're in decent enough shape. You know, we go for a jog, you know, twice a week or we go to the gym three times a week or whatever it is. And, and that's not really health. Right. And that, and that's, that was kind of like a thing that was, um, intriguing to me. Cause I'm like, well, I mean, you were already healthy. Like you looked fine. <laughs> and right. yeah, I, I don't know how she felt and all that kind of stuff. And so that's kind yeah. of weird to discover in this episode is, you know, what the, those iterations of health looks like for people. So um, yeah. so, that, so it's a really good one. And then next week we have Derek Sven on. Derek's interesting because, you know, he was, I, I think it was his dad was like a lab tech or owned a lab or a dental lab or something like that. So he was a lab tech first, then became a, a dental hygienist. And then he went back and became what we call an EFTA, which I think we're going to talk a little bit about next week on the intro. And then he is going back to even more school. And he's just like, like even the title of that one, I think is like, lab tech to rdh to dot 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 because we just have no idea where he's going to end up that's exciting so he's got he's got some plans for for the dental world that that sound pretty interesting that's Um, exciting and then i mean after that one then we have one about um the international federation of dental hygiene uh, meeting in korea with emily bogey and um a whole slew of things after that that's going to be interesting so man we are interesting conversations come in our way I know it's intriguing to me because it's like, well, how do people come up with like desires and things like that? I mean, I'm sure there's some, like something in the brain or whatever that's like, Hey, um, you know, lean into this This is something that needs to be solved. But I think like Derek, or I think like Emily Bogey, you know, these are problem solvers. These are people that are just yes. like really gung ho to like find a problem and fix it. Yes. Thank goodness we have people like that in our profession and I'm sure other professions too, but it's so exciting to see people like that, that are, yeah, they're movers and shakers, but they're really, they're problem solvers. Like you said, seeing something and what can we do about it? How can we change it? So it's exciting. Do you feel like you're that kind of a person? Are you, are you someone who's just like, oh, look, this is a, an itch that needs to be scratched. I feel like I am 100%. I don't know if I, I don't always, I don't always know exactly like what it is, but I, I feel like I always like have that like, that if there's like a gut feeling, I'm like, there's something there and I need to do something about it. Yeah. So it's a, yeah. Yeah, it's a gut feeling thing. So, yeah. What do you know about brain health and Alzheimer's? 
Um, I think pretty surface level. Well, I will say this. My senior year of dental hygiene school, which was years ago, I conducted research for our like symposium on Alzheimer's and periodontal disease. And so I think that's kind of like my surface level knowledge as far as like that connection with like the beta amyloid plaques in the brain and bacteria and the um, strains of bacteria that are found in the mouth also found in those plaques in the brain. So that's really my my basic knowledge of it. But okay, not. so more than me, obviously, already. I'm like, okay, that, <laughs> that, I'll just go with you on that. I'm sure you're okay. right about it. So uh, I'm going to put something into our newsletter. Listeners, if you want to get our newsletter, uh, we've been a little bit delinquent as we switch over to a different platform, but it's, it's going to be revived here real quick. But there was a, an article, and I, I, I don't know that I necessarily am ready to jump into like believing this article all the way. <laughs> and I can't remember what the source was. But it, the, but it was suggesting that, and look, if this is like this, like everyone else already knows this, and I'm just the person that's just, I'm way late to the game. Um, I, so Alzheimer's, they're saying it's actually not a brain disease. It's actually an autoimmune disease. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I'm like trying to think like, because it's, it's truly characterized by like the plaque buildups in the brain. And that, so, um, is it, yeah, it's like, is it our body that's creating that essentially? Is that why we're saying it's, an, or why they're now saying it's an autoimmune disease? Didn't read the whole article. Okay. Uh, I'll just be honest, because it's, it starts getting to the words that I don't understand. And well, it's oh, it gets a, very high level. Line, it's hard to understand. Read. Yes, for sure. And so, but I will link, I will link to, I'll send it to you a little bit later. Um, hmm, interesting. But it's just, it's one of those things I'm like, okay, if that really is true, if it really is autoimmune, that's a little bit of a paradigm shift from what we've all thought and have been learning right. for all these, these years. But it's also interesting because like, if again, if it is true, man, science changes so quickly and so, so often. Right. I think we're just now like learning about brain health and, and all of that. And there's so many really great courses by some really phenomenal hygienists out there on brain health. And then now this might be changing yet again. Right. You know, the brain is science. right. It's one of those things I feel like is so vast that there's so much that we don't know. And so, but it's also like really encouraging and exciting, especially something like Alzheimer's that we just, I would love to hear of um, a solution. And so if we're, yeah. it is a paradigm shift looking at it completely different. Maybe that's what what's needed in science is a completely different shift from what we've always known. Yeah, no, I I agree with that a hundred percent. All right, I think that's that's probably it for this week, everyone. Um, we'll get we'll get you right into this episode here with Jamie Britt. Hope you enjoy it. Um, and like we always ask, like, if you have any questions, make sure you reach out to her. She's definitely wants to talk to you and wants to kind of share more of her journey with you. And we're gonna have her back on for another episode um, at some point in the future, uh, talking weirdly jujitsu. I think so. All right, everyone, have a good week. Tale of two hygienists. Are you with your face? <laughs> I don't know. I know you can't see I have a voice. Are you nervous? Yeah. We've done this before. What? <sighs> Voices of Dentistry. I know. 22? 23. Yeah, so it's even more recent. I know. I should have said 22. I should have gone You should have, it. but it's too late. All right, listeners, welcome to the podcast. We are joined today by Jamie. Jamie, thank you for being on the show. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. I should have said welcome back. Yeah, you should have. I was an idiot, but it's fine. Don't it's been a long time, you know, I'll keep that other stuff about yeah you know, when we met into the beginning, so that way okay, people will know. Anyways, okay. So, Jamie, so we're going to get into like your background and stuff in, the, in a few minutes, but I want to set the stage for what this episode is going to be about for our listeners because- with health and wellness, it's been a struggle for me my whole entire life. You know, I've always been a bigger dude. I've always played sports. I've been, you know, athletic, but I've always been a bigger dude. And I've always been fascinated by the people who are in the health and wellness space. Maybe not necessarily, you know, saying like, hey, look at me, look at me, but also the ones that are like doing it for themselves because they find a value. They find something within themselves that pushes them to do the thing that they feel good doing, right? But I also noticed that it, the people that I, I admire evolve. It's a journey. It's this like we're constantly learning. We're constantly updating our, you know, regimens and our our eating habits and all of the different things. So that's listeners what I want to talk about because I feel like we are all struggling with that outside of dentistry, with the struggles that we have there. That is a, a major problem. 
But in my opinion, if we can go ahead and fix that, that'll help us in our careers. And so that's kind of where we're, where we're going with all of this. So Jamie, please, will you tell us a little bit of background about yourself, where you're coming from, uh, you know, talk about your, your dental journey a little bit, and then I'll, I'll set us up for some hard, harder questions for you. Okay. So I'm Jamie. I'm a dental hygienist in alternative practice. I don't necessarily use my alternative practice license right now, but um, technically I have it. I started my dental journey about 23 years ago. I've been a hygienist for 18 years. And after dental hygiene school, I went back and got my alternative practice license that allowed me to run my own mobile dental hygiene unit for the medically compromised and homebound community. So you can open your own storefront, but that's what I chose to do. So I Ran that practice for about eight years wow. and then relocated, so gave up that practice to other RDHAPs and dentists. And now I'm working private practice four and a half days a week. Wow. Okay, so you've, so you've been practicing for quite some time. Now, during all of this, concurrently, have you always been a healthy person? Do we have to define what health means, first of all? Yes. <laughs> okay. So, no, I mean... Generally, I've been a fairly healthy person. Uh, when I say that, not every day of my life, and it's been literally a journey, a, a very long journey, the ebbs and flows where some some years I'm really, really good and I'm on point with my health journey. And then, you know, life happens, things happen, stressors happen, relationships happen, moves happen, all the things, and I fall off. Yeah, but and so... It's, I've always been very athletic. I've always been into working out, but I was never really incredibly intentional about my fitness goals, which, you know, translated into not so great of a journey, but a journey nonetheless. So can we maybe like define like what is working out, uh, early, early years, what is working out? Is this getting on the elliptical and calling it a workout or is this weights and all the different things. So yeah, so yes, some years it means just doing cardio. Of, uh, you know, some periods of time meant starving myself. Other periods of time meant oh, I'm going to try to incorporate weights, but I don't really know what I'm doing in the gym. Yay. I'm just going to go in and not really have a plan and but I think I'll do a little here and a little there. And other times, you know, I I would read something and try to follow certain certain workout programs or join a, a boxing class or so, something but it was never like I said in intentional it was just like I'm, I'm just gonna try this because this is convenient for me at the time okay so you're you're doing all that stuff like this is who you were but then there was a, a, a time where you decided to make a change in your life and when was that I decided to make a change after a very traumatic event that happened to me in 2017, I was in the Vegas shooting at Route 91, and I luckily made it out of there with my best friend, somebody that we know did not, and lots of other people didn't, as everybody knows. And for me, when I made it out of that event, the next day, when I, you know, realized that I was okay and um, and made it out, I really went back home and kind of reevaluated what am I doing with my life? Yeah. You know, I've, I have this career. I've been a hygienist since I was 24 years old and I'm, I, I'm not happy. I'm kind of all over the place. I have, you know, I'm in a toxic relationship. I had some uh, toxic friendships at the time. And I was just like, what, what am I doing? What is my purpose? What is my goal? What, what is my intention for myself? And I immediately broke up with my boyfriend uh, in my toxic relationship and got rid of a couple of other toxic friendships in my life and just really honed in and got specific about what I wanted for myself. And at that time, I wanted to settle down. I wanted to meet somebody, settle down, have a family, and that's that's what I did. I went into, you know, the dating pool and, and you know, I don't want to say I interviewed people, but I just <laughs> had a very specific goal of what I was looking for. And uh, I ended up, you know, getting back into working out and just being really diligent about it. 
And I eventually I did that for about six months or so. And I did meet somebody and he I thought he was everything I wanted, everything I needed. Everything was lining up perfectly. I relocated and we got married and we kind of got back into a toxic situation together. I fell off my my working out. I wasn't doing it like I was. Initially, he and I were working out together. We were kind of teaming up, but we did not have a great relationship. So about six months after we got married, he asked for a divorce, which I was at the time was very blindsided by it. And uh, which, you know, it was it was a very toxic relationship. It was physically abusive, verbally abusive. Um, He was having multiple affairs anyway. So it was just another time uh, that was really, really low for myself. So now looking back, obviously, it was the best, best thing that happened. But uh, so I got back into the gym, got back into my workout routine again, was really hardcore about it for the most part. And when I say hardcore about it, I mean, I was doing it really well through the week, being very intentional. But on the weekends, I was still doing my thing and having my fun. And then I kind of cleaned up my act a little bit and I reconnected with my high school crush of, you know, many, many years ago. And he and I started dating and things developed really quickly. And we just got married actually a couple months after you and I met the first time. But he and I got married and again, started working out and doing the things again and getting back on the food prepping thing. And but again, I just I wasn't being incredibly intentional. So my my current husband is amazing and very supportive and and hunky and hunky he is, he is. sorry he I'm, is. I'm not, like I'm mad at him he's <laughs> he's a good looking dude I'll tell you what I know and all, and oh, all sorry, the guys have I'm, a man I'm gonna talk about him, him. <laughs> and supportive so when we met originally like, he was the one that was just like hey by the way she is awesome you definitely need to have her on the podcast it wasn't just like you were like a, a fan of the podcast yeah. it was like it was really good so. Yeah, Aww. yeah. Aww. I I wanted to switch to like your the the period of when you and I met, and I say twenty twenty three or out of twenty twenty two, whatever it was. When we met, can we go back to like your food prepping previously? I felt like you were in a really healthy spot, like physically healthy spot. What was the the lessons learned with food at that at that time? So with my food prepping, I wasn't counting out things and weighing out things as strategically as I am now. So, and again, falling off on the weekend, you know, it's really easy. I mean, especially we're hygienists, we're busy. The grab and go situation is amazing. It's easy. It fits into our life. It fits into our schedule. We can shove food between patients, you know, right. all those things. But on the weekends, you know, th- that's that's the hard part. So, so yeah, I I I did all of that. But in comparison to what I'm doing now, it's I, I stick I stick to those things and I do weigh things out. And for me, it it really changed about, I would say, seven, about seven months ago when I really started counting my macronutrients, you know, and taking those percentages and having my body composition checked. And if I could actually just back up for a moment that I, I joined this particular gym that opened in our town and this particular gym it holds you accountable every two weeks. I mean, there is a body composition checked and it's not about, you know, just losing weight and seeing the numbers go down on the scale. They weigh your water, they weigh your lean muscle, they weigh your body fat percentage, all of that. And they set up a nutrition plan for you and give you all of the tools to to do what you need to do. And then they they reevaluate every two weeks to, to change things up accordingly wow. if you need that. So, yeah, I was just being really st- strategic about that. And that is completely different than how I was doing doing things before. Um, yeah. And then, yeah. I want to talk about, like, weighing food versus, like, counting calories and things. You said it's so just, like, it rolled off the tongue, like, oh, I was not weighing things. Whatever. Like, that is, I don't know that a lot of people weigh their food. I, I That's a foreign concept to me. What are you weighing? Yeah. So, well, depending on depending on what your your goals are, your nutrition goals are, everyone's obviously going to have different goals. Uh, some people are just trying to get a little more fit. Uh, me personally, I had some very specific goals, which we can talk about um, and, and reasons why I chose to go so hardcore <laughs> with this. 
But as far as the macros go, you're weighing certain percentages of your fats and your protein and your carbohydrates, and you're being really strategic about when you're eating those fats, proteins, and carbohydrates. So you're literally weighing, you know, for me, I'm trying to meet 150 grams of protein per day. So I'm taking lean proteins and, and weighing that out to know, you know, six ounces of chicken breast is 54 grams of protein, you know, and, and so on. So and then and then changing my making sure I'm not having the carbs at night, but having those proteins with fat. And then if I'm going to do my carbs, I'm going to, you know, eat a certain amount of carbs in the morning and for, for snack how or, did you, or for lunch. How did you find out what's specific for your body and your age? My my coat, really, my coat. She's incredible. Uh, and she she owns this gym, actually. So she just put me on a six week program and we reevaluated that to see if it was working. And it was working. I was losing a little bit of weight, but I started jujitsu also about seven or eight months ago. But at the same time, I joined this gym. And so I got a wild hair and said, why not? <laughs> and, you know, I ended up loving it and was like, you know what? I'm going to sign up to do a competition at 41 years old. You know, that sounds <laughs> great. That sounds fun. Um, so with that in mind, she also helped me get very specific about my goals and just kind of tweaking things to see, OK, how are we going to get you in this particular weight class? We're not just trying to lose weight. We're trying to get gain lean muscle, which increases your metabolism reduce your body fat and get in a certain weight class to compete at this competition. So are you a competitive person by nature? Absolutely. Really? Yeah. Oh, I mean, that's new to news to me. I didn't expect that yeah, answer. Definitely. So the goals that you guys had oriented was like, let me be the, like the fiercest competitor that yes. existed. Yes. I, I mean, my first competition, I was like, I'm going to win gold. I didn't, but I was saying, so how are you doing with it? Just out of curiosity. Yeah. So, uh, well, I competed in May, um, at jujitsu world league. And uh, I got silver. That's great. Awesome. So yeah, it was terrifying, but, you, but you, exhilarating all at the same time. This is a brand new sport for you. It is. And you guys still got silver. It did. You did. Yeah. It was fun. That's fun. Was you, you made a post. And the reason why we're even having this conversation is you, you made this post about, oh my gosh, like I thought I knew fitness, but I, I just, I just actually really found it. Is this the jujitsu? Is this the working with the coach? Is this the, the, the right training? This is it. Yes. What is the what does training in the gym look like for you and currently? It's a, it's a little bit of both. So when I'm doing it's primarily weights okay. and strength training. I've almost aside from jujitsu, there there's cardio involved with jujitsu. But when I say cardio, I'm you know I used to run two or three miles. Like you know I was on the elliptical, the bike, hiking, things like that. So when I say cardio, that's what that's what I mean. I'm yeah. no longer doing any of that. I mean, I still hike for fun, but I'm not doing it as my primary means of exercise. Uh, so I'm primarily lifting lifting weights. My goal right now is to build lean muscle to keep my metabolism going and to decrease body fat. And that was also like a huge paradigm shift for me too. I mean, it's, you know, you're so focused on this number on the scale and it's not going down. Well, when you start building muscle, you, you're, the number doesn't always go down on the scale. Yeah. Um, but when I was like, you know what, I want to learn, I want to lose 5% body fat. You know, I want to put one pound of muscle on, you know, when I got a little bit more just hyper focused and a little more intentional, strategic about it, things started to click and consistency. I'm in the gym six to seven days a week. I'm, I'm working out in the morning. I'm doing my weight training at this gym and at another local gym. And I'm doing jujitsu, you know, three to five times a week at night. So what do you feel like you've reached your pinnacle of health or are you still on this journey? No, definitely still on the journey. What is that? What are you striving for? What does that end point look like for you? Well, at the moment, because I want to sign up for another competition before the end of the year, um, I I do want, I'm, I don't really care about losing any more weight. Uh, I would like to put a little bit, just a little bit more muscle on, but really just to decrease my body fat by about another 4%. And then just maintain, really, because I feel good. Like I have all of this sudden, like the fogginess has gone away. The mental clarity is there, you know, and it's it just translates into all these other areas of my life. And I just finally feel content. Yeah. You know, somebody yeah. asked me the other day, are you happy? Well, I'm a I'm a positive person. I can find happiness in 
and bits and pieces in, you know, even in the saddest moments of my life. But right now I feel very happy in terms of contentment. I feel very content. Yeah. yeah. So, which well, is a change for me. And we're here at RDH Under One Roof. And so you, you're, you've been here for a week because you did evolution. I did. So yes. now how do you eat and exercise because I'm feeling sluggish this week. Like it's like tacos and, you know, and your schedule's off. And what did you do? Well, when I flew into town, I got an Uber to Walmart and I went grocery shopping and got as much stuff that would fit in the mini fridge and basically got ready to drink protein shakes because I'm trying to get a certain amount of, you know, protein day. So ready to drink protein shakes. I got Greek yogurt protein bars actually brought some protein bars as well and I got a little like just uh meat and cheese that I didn't have to you know warm up uh but that's kind of what I kept in my room and then you know at night I'm trying to just eat either chicken or I've actually cut out a lot of red meat which I love red meat I didn't I just I I did that because I was really trying to to get lean for that competition so I've incorporated red meat again but yeah just really trying to stick to to protein and and veggies really basic basic even my meal prep very basic so yeah wow hard that's, to do hard to do when you travel but you know you do what you can absolutely well that's 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 a, a really good idea to just go ahead and get some groceries um and then how about i haven't i usually do cardio and i haven't done any use use the gym here so have you been able to do any workouts yes they have have you been to the gym here the gym is a full-on gym here so yeah, so a few nights uh, or a few few mornings, uh, got up and and worked out and got the blood moving and all that. Did some weights before before classes. Glad they have a great facility. Yeah. Can we just end on the your best advice for the the practicing clinician that's trying to fit it all in, that's trying to do it all, be healthy, and you know, and, and live a full productive life as a clinical hy- hygienist. Planning. You have to, you have to be, you have to plan your time, you know, and I don't have a lot of, you know, I, I, I don't have kids of my own. I don't have little, little kids. I have uh, stepchildren, you know, who are pretty, you know, they're self-sufficient and we don't have them a hundred percent of the time. But yeah, I mean, you have, you have to plan. I mean, Sunday, I spend Sunday planning my week, planning what I'm, what I'm going to eat for the week, planning my workouts. So just being really in, intentional about it. But before that, being intentional about a specific goal because mm-hmm. that's really what changed for me is with the competition just you know we I'm like oh I kind of want to be healthy I want to be fit like we all kind of want to want that but for me specifically it was just having an intentional very specific goal Austin if they want to reach out to you ask you any follow-up questions how can they find you you can find me at floss and fitness on Instagram or my email is j Britt b-r-i-t-t r-d-h at gmail.com awesome thanks for being here Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, this is a tale. A tale, oh yeah. A tale of two hygienists. So there might be only one. Bringing the best of dental knowledge. And we do it all with ease. We cover oral health and screening. And preventing gum disease. We're going to do a lot of learning. And have a little bit of fun working at the dentist. A tale of two hygienists.